Well, there's a revolution going on. And finally tonight, a story for everyone who feels overwhelmed by information. Is that we're more connected now to more people on the planet than ever before. Except for if you're sitting next to someone. 400 million people are friending, unfriending, and trading Farmville cows on Facebook. 50 million people are tweeting, retweeting, and getting into tweet baits about March Madness or the virtues of Foursquare. To paraphrase William Wordsworth, the World Wide Web is too much with us. Powers response, a look at our present conundrum, titled Hamlet's Blackberry, Practical Philosophy for Building a Good Life in the Digital Age. Now, you are all actually cyborgs. You're cyborgs every time you look at a computer screen or use one of your cell phone devices. Have you ever been here? This place is called the Whispering Wall on the Ohio State University campus. The interesting thing about it is that a person can sit on one side and whisper the same volume. A person, or a camera in this case, on the other side can hear exactly what that person's saying, despite the distance. Technology has essentially turned the whole world into a Whispering Wall. When someone whispers into a cell phone in China, hear it through my cell phone here in the United States. And I just wondered how people use these technologies and manage these many, many connections in their daily lives and how, what they found most effective. So, so last night I was doing a research paper. The next thing I know, I found myself on Wikipedia research paper. Two hours later, I was still reading about Juneau, Alaska. I had no intention of reading about Juneau, Alaska. I do get distracted on occasion. Example where Wikipedia sucked me in is feral children. And if you've ever heard of them, they're children who were raised by wild animals. And my phone's going off as we speak, and it's very distracting. But, you want to get it? You want to get it? Go, no, go no, ahead. Go I don't want to get it. I'm gonna. I'm you can gonna get, this is gonna, gonna be footage. We can get it. We can get footage. Hold on one second. Yeah. See, this is what happens. This is what, yeah, you're trying this to. This is yeah. this is this is productivity that just was wasted productivity. So it's like this constant stream of thousands of stimuli. It like really trains you to be this like jerky, not able to focus at too much at once kind of thought processes. And, you know, I'm certain that the younger you are when you start, the more it affects you too. Yeah. But I don't know. There's something great about peace and quiet. That's and like turn, just turning stuff off is like, it's got to be part of my new, uh, my new approach. I am a single tasker. If my studying would be 10 times more efficient if I did not have distractions such as email, text. I, I like to be able to focus on one thing and I like I feel like it's a constant, that stupid cell phone, I feel like it's constantly nagging me and so it's almost more of a nuisance than a help mm -hmm. in some ways, especially because I live with my roommates. Do you yeah. really have to call me all the time? Yeah. If I don't get back to you within an hour, call the police because <laughs> something's probably wrong. Um, but no, generally it's generally it's instantaneous. Sometimes I'll get an email, read it, think about it for a while, and then respond. Um, but it's I pride myself on instantaneous communications. I mean, the problem with my method of doing things is people expect instantaneous communication. Yeah. They come to expect it. So when I don't respond right away, they, you know, they know something's up, or um, you're like actively ignoring them, right? Or, right. Yeah, okay. um, I mean, for example, just this morning, I got a text message, and I responded, but then I fell asleep, so I didn't respond to further text messages. So they thought that I was purposely avoiding them because it was the situation. You could yeah. that could I, that could have been the case, but in fact, I wasn't. I was sleeping like any other normal person would do, and because they know that I always have my cell phone they expect a response. I think the first thing that kind of caught my attention was I had 4,000 plus or like 2,000, 3,000 something plus friends and I thought that was ridiculous. And I was thinking, how do I, I don't communicate with 4,000 people, you know what I yeah. mean? It doesn't happen. I don't check their updates and I was never really into Facebook where I would know what was going on with people's lives through Facebook. If I was on it, I might check what was going on. Mainly I think I use it for birthdays more so, so I didn't forget people's birthdays. but. I think other people started taking it too seriously, and if I didn't respond to what they had posted on my wall or sent me a message, then it was a big deal to them. Like, oh, you didn't respond to my Facebook. What's that about? 
I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I didn't read my Facebook. Yeah. So I thought Facebook became too serious uh -huh. for people. And I think real life communication and social interaction is more real than, yeah. than Facebook. What bothers me most is that I think a lot of people feel more comfortable communicating via social media, like internet, phone, texting, um, email even, and they forget that sometimes personal interaction is better. Facebook, I mean, Facebook's a pivotal... Yeah, what is Facebook in relationships, in, like, relationship. in, in dating and relationships? Uh, it's a mess, is what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> the whole relationship status, that, I wish that didn't exist. My boyfriend requested me on it, and I was like, no, I refuse to put my relationship status on Facebook. It drives me crazy to have people have all that information about my life. So, he didn't get that. And yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you limit, so you limit, okay. Yeah. Um, I just don't, I feel like it's this constant, like, everybody can see into your life, and I just feel like that's something to keep, you can have the bare minimum on there, but like, I just don't like everybody having a, a view into my life. It creeps um, and I think, uh, I think it's just, I think it's bettering the world, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's just giving you access to so much more information on any given moment. I mean, um, the knowledge that I have at my fingertips is far more than I could ever have in my own brain. And that just, that expands you, you know, like you are no longer confined by your own skull. You can just find the information like that and, you know, it betters, betters the world. We have the next revolution occurring, and I think it'll continue to happen. The naysayers will be louder and louder every time, but you have to believe in humans, that, that they can create something that's gonna make jobs, save lives, feed the hungry, uh, disseminate information, and all together make the world a better place. So, believe in people.